Paleontology is the study of ancient life through remains left by the creatures that once roamed our lands millions of years ago. With the study of anything ancient, you can bet there's a bunch of weird and obscure theories out there. So that's exactly what we'll be covering today in this weird paleontology iceberg. This video will cover tier 1 since this chart is super long. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video with the first entry. Plastic dinosaurs made from dinosaurs. This idea centers around the notion that plastic dinosaur toys contain elements or remnants of real dinosaurs. It's a pretty unusual thing to say, but it emerged from the association with fossil fuels and dinosaurs, while also being adopted by oil companies as marketing strategies in the early 1900s. Basically, the term fossil fuels likely lead to the assumption that they're directly related to the remains of ancient creatures like dinosaurs. And since synthetic plastic is made from crude oil, a type of fossil fuel, you can basically see where the link was created. However, the reality is that vast majority of oil and other fossil fuels originate from ancient microscopic marine life, such as phytoplankton and algae, rather than the remains of vertebrates, such as dinosaurs. Kenneth Lacavara, a well-known American paleontologist, also reinforces this fact in an online article I'll link down below by highlighting that the geological origins of oil fields, especially the ones supplying the bulk of the world's oil, do not align with the presence of dinosaurs. Hollow Earth The concept of hollow earth proposes that the earth is not a solid sphere but rather a shell-like structure with vast, habitable spaces within its interior. The idea has been supported by some speculative theories, mythologies, and fiction. Historical figures like Edmund Haley, known for Haley's Comet, wondered about the possibility of concentric shells within the earth. Proponents of the theory suggest that there might be entrances at the poles or various hidden passages that lead to the interior world. Interestingly enough, in this interior world, it's said that extinct creatures like the dinosaurs actually live and thrive within the hollow earth. However, this theory was more out there during the early days of geological inquiry, and nowadays it's more of a product of imaginative thinking and myth. Too Big to Walk The Too Big to Walk idea is about really huge dinosaurs, like Argentinosaurus, being so massive that they might have had trouble moving around easily. These dinosaurs were some of the biggest creatures ever making scientists wonder how they walked around with such huge bodies. Some experts propose their size might have made it hard for them to move fast on land. Their idea is that these giants might have moved very slowly or found different ways to get around, like using water or other tricks to support their weight, meaning they'd be considered semi-aquatic animals. Although scientists are still learning how the animals moved by studying their bones and muscles, this theory is generally considered a fringe theory, but it still remains a fascinating topic in paleontology, so there's not really much about it. Dinosaurs are dragons. During the early stages of saurian fossil discoveries, when paleontology was on its rise, the findings often shared a striking resemblance to the mythical creatures known as dragons. This led some to believe that the findings were mythical beasts from well-known folklore and legends due to their physical appearances. At that time, concepts such as geological time and the idea of extinction were not universally accepted or well understood, neither was the term dinosaur even coined. Therefore, it does make sense that people would have jumped to conclusions and let their mind wander about the possibilities of the fossil's origin. Also, some believe that the origin of dragons in historical myths and legends might have actually been inspired by encounters or interactions with ancient reptilian creatures, such as dinosaurs, which were thought to have lived concurrently with humans. Nowadays, this idea still persists within specific creationist circles. Creationism Creationism is a belief that asserts the universe, earth, and all life forms were created by a divine being, typically in line with religious texts such as the Bible's Genesis account in Christianity. It posits that a supernatural entity, often referred to as a god or higher power, deliberately designed and brought everything into existence. According to creationism, the origins of life and the diversity of living organisms are a result of a purposeful act by a creator rather than through natural processes such as evolution by natural selection. Creationists argue for a literal interpretation of religious texts, advocating that the earth and its life forms were created in a relatively short period typically a few thousand years, as opposed to the vast timescales suggested by scientific evidence. De-evolution De-evolution is a term that's sometimes used in discussions about evolution, but holds a different meaning than what one might expect. In scientific contexts, de-evolution is not a recognized or accepted concept within evolutionary biology. Evolution typically describes a process of species developing and changing over time to adapt to their environments or changing circumstances which is referred to as natural selection. However, outside of scientific circles, de-evolution is occasionally used to suggest a backward or regressive evolution, 
implying that organisms might actually revert to a simpler or less advanced form. There's this thing out there called tech de-evolution, which was pretty interesting to learn about. This idea essentially contradicts the basic principles of evolutionary biology, which emphasize adaption and the diversification of species over time. Therefore, it's generally considered to be based on a misunderstanding of how evolution actually works. Orthogenesis Chain of Being Orthogenesis, also known as straight line evolution, was a hypothesis prevalent during the late 19th and early 20th centuries, suggesting that species have an inherent tendency to evolve in a predetermined direction. During the Victorian era, when Charles Darwin introduced the theory of evolution, it clashed with prevailing religious and societal views. Darwin's proposition that humans shared a common ancestry with other earthly creatures challenged the notion of humans as divinely ordained superior beings, so you can see how we would have gotten a lot of backlash for it. Proponents believed that evolutionary changes were guided by an internal force or predetermined path within organisms rather than solely driven by natural selection or environmental influences. Darwin himself was aware of the potential for his theory to be misconstructed as applying a linear progression toward human superiority. He famously described evolution not as a linear tree with humans at its apex, but rather as a radiating bush, emphasizing that humans are just one branch among many in the evolutionary process. Mythical Beasts Based on Early Fossil Finds The concept that ancient mythologies and folklore might have been influenced by early encounters with fossil remains has been suggested in various forms throughout history. This idea has gained traction in recent times with some scholars proposing connections between ancient myths and actual fossil discoveries. One such example comes from Adrian Meyer, an archaeologist, who suggested that certain mythical creatures, like griffins, might have originated from encounters with protoceratops skeletons. Meyer theorized that ancient peoples might have come across the skeletal remains of protoceratops, a dinosaur with a beak-like structure, and incorporated them into their legends of griffins. However, while this idea has garnered attention and interest, it has faced criticism and skepticism from other scholars. Anthropologists like Langford and paleontologist Mark Witten have raised serious concerns and identified flaws in Mayer's argument regarding the association between Proceratops and Griffins. Ica Stones The Ica Stones are a set of andesite stones that were discovered in the Ica province of Peru in the 1960s by Basilio Ostioia. These stones are notable for allegedly bearing shallow engravings depicting scenes of ancient humans hunting and interacting with dinosaurs, as well as illustrations of advanced technology like telescopes and flying machines. Despite the initial fascination surrounding these stones, investigations at Skurini have revealed them to be forgeries. Basilo Utsia, the individual who claimed to have discovered and carved these stones, later admitted to creating them himself. The gravings on the stones, including depiction of dinosaurs coexisting with humans and technological advancements, were revealed to be modern fabrications rather than genuine ancient artifacts. Despite their proven inauthenticity, the Ica stones have persisted as a subject of interest for certain groups, notably among proponents of creationism and ancient astronaut theories. Advocates of these ideas have used the Ica stones as perpetrated evidence of an advanced civilization that coexisted with dinosaurs, suggesting that these engravings validate their beliefs. Piltdown Man The Piltdown Man refers to an infamous archaeological hoax that took place in the early 20th century. In 1912, fragments of a skull and jawbone were discovered in Piltdown, East Sussex, England, purportedly presenting a huge missing link between apes and humans. This find was hailed as a groundbreaking discovery, suggesting the existence of an ancient human ancestor with a large brain case and ape-like jaw. For several decades, the Piltdown Man was considered a crucial piece of evidence in the study of human evolution. However, in the 1950s, extensive scientific scrutiny revealed that the Piltdown Man was a forgery. Chemical analysis and detailed examinations exposed that the skull fragments were from a comparatively recent human skull, while the jaw mode belonged to an orangutan. These bones were deliberately stained and manipulated to appear ancient, fooling scientists and experts for many years. Chickenosaurus Paleontologist Jack Horner has been spearheading a project aimed at genetically modifying chicken embryos to exhibit dinosaur-like traits by manipulating certain genes associated with dinosaur characteristics. It's kind of like Jurassic Park but with a chicken. The idea stems from the evolutionary link between birds and dinosaurs, since birds are considered descendants of dinosaurs based on fossil evidence and shared characteristics. Horner's endeavor has attracted attention due to its ambitious goal of reverse engineering features of dinosaurs from modern bird embryos. Although there have been claims of limited success within this project, 
such as experiments resulting in chicken embryos exhibiting skull characteristics of certain dinosaur species, like the Velociraptor, many within the paleontological community remain skeptical about the project's scientific merit and feasibility. Critics argue that even if Homer's experiments were successful in producing chicken embryos with altered features resembling certain aspects of dinosaurs, it wouldn't actually result in any resurrection of dinosaurs, so there probably won't be any chicken dinosaurs running around for a while. Neodinosaurs In the context of cryptozoology, neodinosaurs refer to claims or belief that certain non-avian dinosaurs, presumed to be extinct for millions of years, might somehow still exist in remote or unexplored regions of the world. One such example is the case of Mokele Membe, a creature often sighted in the folklore of Central Africa, particularly in the Congo region. Mokelo Membe is described in local legends as a large, semi-aquatic creature resembling a sauropod dinosaur, with traits similar to those of prehistoric dinosaurs like the long-necked sauropods. Cryptozoologists and some explorers have hypothesized that Mokelo Membe, if it exists, might represent a surviving population of dinosaurs, specifically sauropods, thought to have gone extinct millions of years ago. These claims are based on anecdotal accounts though, folklore, and alleged sightings by locals and explorers though so they lack substantial scientific evidence. It's kind of like the Loch Ness Monster and Nessie, where there's a lot of accounts but there's no actual real evidence out there. Therefore, the existence of living non-avian dinosaurs, such as Mokele Membe or other similar cryptids, remains speculative. But just imagining if something like that is actually out there though is terrifying considering the size of those things. Poloxy Tracks The Poloxy River Tracks refer to a set of alleged fossilized footprints found along the Poloxy River in Texas, USA. These tracks gained attention due to claims that they provided evidence of both humans and dinosaurs coexisting, seemingly contradicting the widely accepted understanding of the fossil record. Initially, some individuals suggested that certain prints within the trackway resembled human footprints alongside larger tracks presumed to be those of dinosaurs. This concept became a focal point for those advocating the idea of young earth creationism, which again proposes a literal interpretation of the Bible's account for creation. However, upon further examination and extensive scientific evidence, many of the tracks initially believed to be human footprints were re-evaluated and determined to be misinterpretations or erosional features that resembled human-like shapes. Human self-domestication Human self-domestication is a hypothesis proposing that humans, through social and evolutionary processes, have undergone self-directed selection similar to the domestication of animals. This idea suggests that over the course of human evolution, certain behavioral and physical traits emerged or were reinforced through societal pressures linked to changes that parallel those in domesticated animals. Basically, it suggests that as humans transitioned from hunter-gatherer societies to more settled agricultural communities, living together in larger groups became more advantageous. This meant that humans would have reduced their reactive aggression, increased cooperation, and changes in physical appearance for the overall benefit. Supporters of the self-domestication hypotheses point to evidence such as the reduction in cranial size, changes in skeletal features, and alterations in brain structures over the course of human evolution. They argue that these changes might be analogous to those observed in domesticated animals compared to their more wild ancestors. Cavemen coexisted with dinosaurs The idea that cavemen coexisted with dinosaurs is a misconception or an inaccurate belief. According to established scientific evidence from paleontology, the existence of dinosaurs predates the appearance of modern humans by millions of years. Dinosaurs, which lived during the Mesozoic era, became extinct around 65 million years ago, long before the emergence of Homo sapiens. The term caveman generally refers to early humans, such as Neanderthals or other prehistoric human ancestors who lived during the Stone Age. These early human species evolved much later, appearing tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of years ago, which is still significantly after the extinction of dinosaurs. When you really think about the timeline of events, it's actually pretty scary knowing the gap between humans and dinosaurs is so large. Overall, claims suggesting that cavemen and dinosaurs coexisted are often propagated in popular culture or certain pseudoscientific ideas, but we definitely know it's a misconception. All vertebrates are fish. This idea, or more commonly known as like a joke, emphasizes that cladistically speaking, the traits defining a specific group are also present in all its descendants, technically labeling them as fish. As vertebrates evolved from fish-like ancestors, they retained certain fundamental characteristics that trace back to their fish origins, even though they've evolved and diversified into distinct lineages with unique adaptions. 
but you can see how this categorization doesn't actually reflect the practical or everyday classification of animals. In scientific terms, while humans and other vertebrates share a common evolutionary lineage with fish, they've also undergone a bunch of evolutionary changes that differentiate them from their fish ancestors. Classifying humans or other vertebrates as fish just isn't that useful for understanding their biology, behavior, or ecological roles. Lemuria Lemuria is a concept that emerged in the 19th century about a hypothetical lost continent. It was envisioned as a sunken landmass that might have existed in the Indian or Pacific Ocean and became associated with the origin of humanity. Ernest Haeckel, a prominent biologist and philosopher, suggested Lemuria as a possible ancient land where lemurs, considered among the closest relatives of humans at that time, might have originated. Some proponents of this concept, including certain occult groups, also developed narratives and mystical beliefs about Lemuria, linking it to human evolution from primordial forms to more complex beings. The belief in Lemurian origins has still persisted, particularly in West Tamil cultural histories, contributing to local folklore and narratives about a lost ancient land. If anyone is interested, there's also a great book out there called The Lost Land of Lemuria that more dwells into the history and cultural significance of the Lemuria concept. I'll link it down if anyone's interested in actually learning about it. Baramint Baramin is a term introduced by Frank Lewis Marsh, a seven-day Adventist biologist. In the context of creationism, specifically young earth creationism, a baramin refers to the concept of created kinds. According to Marsh's belief, baramins represent the original categories or types of organisms created by God. Within these baramins, Marsh proposed that microevolutionary changes could occur, but insisted that they wouldn't lead to the emergence of entirely new species, meaning this would be completely different of what we know of evolution from Darwin. Advocates of the Baramin concept argue that each kind or Baramin represents a distinct group of organisms created by God and serves as the fundamental unit of biological diversity. The concept of Baramins is associated with the rejection of the broader concept of evolution and the idea of common descent. It suggests that while variation occurs within Baramins, the boundaries of these kinds are fixed and prevent one kind from evolving into another over long periods. Abiogenesis Abiogenesis is a theory that proposes life came from non-living matter. It refers to the hypothetical phenomenon where simple organic molecules under certain conditions on early earth gradually assembled and formed increasingly complex structures, eventually leading to the emergence of the first living organisms. This concept suggests that the transition from inanimate matter to living organisms occurred over an extended period through a series of chemical reactions and molecular interactions. Scientists hypothesize that the conditions on early earth such as a reducing atmosphere, energy sources like lightning or geothermal activities, and the presence of certain organic compounds might have facilitated the formation of complex organic molecules, such as amino acids and nucleotides. These building blocks of life, once formed, might have further combined and organized themselves into more complex structures like proteins, RNA, and ultimately the first self-replicating entities representing the earliest forms of life and then coming to where we are today as humans. Prehistoric Volcanism In vintage paleontological illustrations, a prevalent theme depicted frequent and intense volcanic activity during prehistoric times. This artistic portrayal often featured erupting volcanoes as a prominent backdrop to ancient landscapes. The idea behind this trope was rooted in the perception that volcanic eruptions were more frequent and extreme in prehistory compared to contemporary times. Artists and early scientists believed that these volcanic eruptions were a common occurrence and had a significant impact on the ancient environment. This depiction aimed to capture the dramatic and dynamic nature of the Earth's past, showcasing erupting volcanoes as a regular element in the ancient landscapes within paleontological reconstructions. However, now contemporary scientific understanding suggests a more nuanced view of past volcanic activity, recognizing different variations and complexities in the activity behaviors of eruptions throughout Earth's history, which basically means it's an antiquated theory now. Microtrips and Fossils this entry comes from the viral image in 2014, claiming to depict a 250 million year old fossilized microtrip found by a fisherman in Russia. The image, widely circulated online, led to speculations and sensational claims about the discovery of ancient technological artifacts embedded within fossils. However, upon closer scrutiny by experts in paleontology and geology, it was determined that the supposed fossilized microchip was in fact a misidentified or misrepresented natural object. The image actually depicted a fragment of a crinoid, a marine animal related to starfish and sea urchins, rather than a technological artifact. 
Also, there have been occasional unfounded rumors or claims suggesting the discovery of dinosaur bones embedded with microchips or other technological devices within the same rock matrix. Such claims lack credible evidence and are often rooted in misunderstandings, misinterpretations, or deliberate hoaxes rather than genuine scientific discoveries. Panspermia Panspermia is a scientific hypothesis proposing that life or the organic building blocks necessary for life's emergence might have originated somewhere else in the universe and then spread to Earth or other celestial bodies through comets, meteorites, or other space debris. According to the hypothesis, organic molecules or even simple life forms such as bacteria or microbial organisms could have survived space travel within rocks, debris, or protective materials of celestial bodies. These materials could have then potentially reached Earth's surface, delivering the necessary ingredients for life or even primitive life forms. While panspermia offers an intriguing possibility for the origin of life, it's important to note that it's still a hypothesis and still hasn't been definitely proven. The concept raises questions about the conditions required for survival of life or organic compounds during interstellar travel, the likelihood of their arrival on Earth, and their potential role in the emergence of life on our planet. Smithsonian Suppression The Smithsonian Suppression conspiracy theory is widely circulated among groups such as creationists and cryptozoologists. This theory asserts that the Smithsonian Institution is deliberately concealing fossil discoveries that would contradict the accepted understanding of evolutionary history. Proponents of this theory claim that the Smithsonian actively suppresses evidence that includes giant human skeletons, contemporary dinosaur remains, and indications of highly developed ancient civilizations. However, the Smithsonian Institution, like other reputable scientific organizations, has to operate under rigorous standards of evidence and peer-reviewed research. So, if they find something that lacks substantial verifiable evidence, they aren't allowed to accept it as valid scientific discoveries. So, while there's no actual documented credible evidence that the Smithsonian actively suppresses discoveries, it still remains a conspiracy theory out there. Mitochondrial Eve Mitochondrial Eve is a term used in genetics to refer to the most recent common matrilineal ancestor of all living humans. This concept traces back through our matrilineal lineage to a woman who lived in ancient times. Mitochondrial DNA, passed exclusively from mother to offspring, allows scientists to trace ancestry and estimate when this common ancestor might have lived. However, the term mitochondrial Eve often leads to misconceptions or misinterpretations. Some people mistake it to mean that this woman was the only living human female at the time, akin to the first woman as described in religious creation stories such as the Genesis account of Eden. This misconception is incorrect though, because in reality, mitochondrial Eve lived thousands of years ago, not in isolation, but as part of a larger population. She was not the only woman alive during the time, but rather the only woman whose matrilineal line has continued unbroken to the present day in all living humans. Her contemporaries had descendants too, but their maternal lines eventually ceased to continue over generations, while mitochondrial Eve's line persisted. Dinosauroid The dinosauroid concept proposed by Dale A. Russell in 1982 involve the hypothetical post-Cretaceous ancestor from Stenonychosaurus, an extinct dinosaur species. Russell's thought experiment imagined a scenario where this dinosaur ancestor evolved intelligence similar to that of humans, leading to a humanoid-like body plan. Russell's speculation envisioned a creature that would potentially develop a more upright posture, lose much of its tail, gain opposable thumbs, and have a flatter, rounder face. This concept created a vivid and striking image in popular culture captivating the imagination of many, but also evoking criticism for projecting human-like characteristics onto a dinosaur. It was due to this anthropomorphic bias, which suggested that intelligence or tool-making capabilities would lead to a humanoid body plan that caused it to receive the most criticism. Over time, as studies into animal cognition, particularly among dinosaurs' closest living relatives, birds, have become more known, it has become apparent that intelligence and complex behaviors do not necessitate a human-like body plan. Geofacts Geofacts represent natural geological formations that bear a striking resemblance to human-made artifacts, making them challenging to differentiate from ancient human tools or objects. Within the realm of paleoanthropology, the identification of these geofacts becomes crucial as they often blur the line between what might actually be occurring formations and intentionally crafted items by early humans. Numerous instances of some of the oldest claimed human artifacts have faced debates and challenges to their potential classification as geofacts. Particularly, certain iconic examples like the Venus of Birkith Ram and the Venus of Tantan, both thought to be early human figures created by ancient people 
have sparked controversies in the scientific community. These figurines as interpretations as deliberate creations by early humans are contested due to the possibility that they might be natural geological formations, complicating the understanding of early human artistry and cultural development. The distinction between geofacts and intentionally crafted artifacts remains a significant challenge in archaeological and anthropological studies, influencing our understanding of human evolution and cultural origins. Marsupial Monotreme Pterosaurs Edward Newman, a naturalist and publisher, proposed a theory in 1843 that pterosaurs, a group of prehistoric flying reptiles, were not reptiles but marsupial bats. This theory was based on the observation of tufts or hair in pterosaurs' fossils, which suggested that these creatures were not typical cold-blooded reptiles but warm-blooded, hairy animals. Newman's theory was a significant departure from the prevailing theories of the time, which were largely influenced by the renowned French naturalist Georges Cuvier who had described the idea of similarities between bats and pterosaurs. Newman's theory was considered groundbreaking, as it was the first to depict pterosaurs as warm-blooded, hairy creatures. His reconstruction of pterosaurs showed them as resembling flying marsupials, a group of mammals known to be of ancient origin. Newman's theory was also influenced by the work of German naturalist Samuel Thomas von Sumering, who had previously noted similarities between bats and pterosaurs. Martin Rieschus has indeed suggested that pterosaurs were warm-blooded creatures, validating aspects of Newman's theory. However, it's important to note that while Newman's theory was innovated for its time, it is not supported by current scientific consensus, which classifies pterosaurs as reptiles and not mammals. Japanese Paleolithic Hoax The Japanese Paleolithic hoax involving Shinji Fujimura, a prominent archaeological specializing in prehistoric Japanese culture, came to light in the year 2000, revealing a shocking revelation. Fujimura was found to have fabricated the majority of his archaeological discoveries over a significant period spanning from at least 1981 and encompassing around 140 dig sites. These falsified finds had a substantial impact on the field of Japanese archaeology and paleontology, as many of Fujimura's purported discoveries were central to understanding Japan's ancient history. The extent and longevity of this fraudulent scheme exposed significant deficiencies in the academic standards of Japanese archaeology. Fujimura's forgeries prompted a critical reevaluation of existing practices and methodologies within the field. The reliance on his findings necessitated a substantial overhaul of Japanese Paleolithic studies, highlighting the need for more rigorous scrutiny and verification process in archaeological research. Fujimura later himself provided an unusual explanation for his actions, claiming he was motivated by desire for recognition as the man who discovered the oldest stoneware in Japan. He also made peculiar assertions, suggesting that he was influenced or possessed by a demon attributing his actions to supernatural forces. Omphalos Hypotheses The Omphalos Hypotheses, formulated by the naturalist and Christian theologian Philip Henry Gose in 1857, posits a unique perspective on the evidence of evolution found in the fossil record. Gose proposed that God, in the act of creation, intentionally designed the world with a pre-existing history, including the appearance of an evolutionary timeline evident in fossils. The term Omphalos refers to the belief that Adam and Eve despite not having umbilical cords due to their creation by God, would have had belly buttons, analogous to the concept of an apparent evolutionary history within fossils. Gose's hypothesis suggests that the evidence of evolution seen in the fossil record did not represent a real historical sequence of life forms evolving over time. Instead, he argued that God deliberately created the world with the appearance of age and development, including fossil evidence, to give it an appearance of continuity and history. However, the Omphalos hypothesis face significant criticism and skepticism from both scientific and Christian communities. Scientifically, it contradicted the established understanding of evolution and the geological history supported by empirical evidence. Dinosaur Tissue Claims The interests and counterclaims regarding the discovery of soft tissue remnants within fossilized dinosaur bones have sparked controversy within the fields of paleontology. Mary Schweitzer, a paleontologist, gained attention for her assertions of discovering possible blood cells within a Tyrannosaurus rex bone. Schweitzer's findings were initially met with skepticism and controversy due to the unconventional nature of the claims. The idea of soft tissue surviving for tens of millions of years contradicted the established understanding that organic materials decay rapidly over time. Additionally, her methodology involved breaking open or using acid to access the internal structures of the fossils which raised concerns about the potential for contamination or altercation of the specimens. However, subsequent research by Schweitzer and other scientists uncovered additional instances of potential soft tissue preservation in various fossilized dinosaur bones. 
These discoveries, while still controversial, included findings such as structures resembling blood vessels, cells, and proteins that, that appeared to be remarkably well preserved within the ancient bones. Cope's Rule Cope's Rule, named after the American paleontologist Edward Drinker Cope, is a concept that describes the tendency for organisms and evolving lineages to increase in size over time. In simpler terms, it's like saying that over the course of evolution, animals have a tendency to get bigger. This trend has been observed in the fossil records, with examples such as the increase in body size in the lineage of modern horses over the last 60 million years. We've seen that, in many cases, as a species evolves, its members tend to get larger. However, it's important to note that Cope's rule may not apply to all groups of organisms, and there are exceptions to this trend. Think about something like the giant sloth and the sloth today, you know, it's a considerable difference. Scientists are still trying to figure out why this pattern occurs, and what factors might influence it. So, while Cope's rule is a useful concept for understanding the history of life on Earth, it's not a hard and fast rule, and there's still a lot we don't know about it. Reptoid Serpent Cult The concept of reptoids, or serpent cults, proposes a theory suggesting a unified root religion in ancient times that revered a superior race of reptilian beings. This theory has gained recent popularity, particularly through the works of conspiracy theorists such as David Icke. Proponents of this theory claim that ancient serpent cults found across different civilizations throughout history were interconnected and worshipped a prehistoric race of reptilian entities. These beings are often described as advanced or extraterrestrial species, sometimes referred to as reptoids or reptilian humanoids, possessing shape-shifting abilities and exerting control over humanity from behind the scenes. David Icke, among others, has popularized these ideas, suggesting that these reptilian beings are the hidden rulers of the world, manipulating society and influencing world events for their own agenda. Icke's works often combine elements of conspiracy theories, alternative history, and new age beliefs, proposing a narrative where a secret elite supposedly descended from these reptilian entities, control global affairs, and suppress humanity's true potential. Michael Kremel Michael Kremel is an author known for his book Forbidden Archaeology, which presents unconventional perspectives on human history and archaeology. In his book, Kremel challenges the mainstream scientific view of human origins by proposing that anatomically modern humans might have existed on Earth for an immensely extended period, dating back as far as 2.8 billion years ago, which is a long time. Kremel's ideas are distinct from traditional creationist literature in that they are influenced by a Hindu Vedic perspective. He argues that evidence of human presence in ancient geological strata contradicts the commonly accepted timeline of human evolution, proposed by mainstream science. Kremel suggests that there have been advanced civilizations and ancient beings in human form on Earth for far longer than conventional archaeological and anthropological findings suggest. The book Forbidden Archaeology presents a compilation of purported archaeological anomalies and controversial artifacts that, according to Kremel, challenge the conventional understanding of human history. These anomalies, as outlined by Kremel, include alleged discoveries of human artifacts found in geological layers far older than currently accepted by mainstream science. Dinosaur Mating Mystery The mating behavior of large dinosaurs, particularly those with massive size and distinctive anatomical features like spikes or plates, remain a topic of scientific speculation and curiosity in paleontology. For some of the immensely huge quadrupedal dinosaurs, such as Stegosaurus, the mechanics of how these large creatures made it pose intriguing questions. The presence of defensive or ornamental structures like spikes, plates, or horns on certain dinosaur species adds complexity to understanding their mating behavior. Such features could potentially hinder or complicate the mating process, linked to speculation and varying hypotheses among paleontologists. Given the limited direct evidence available in fossil records concerning dinosaur behavior, scientists rely on indirect clues, comparative anatomy, and biomechanical studies to propose theories about dinosaur mating. Speculation on the mating behavior of large dinosaurs include hypotheses about mating rituals, possible courtship displays, and how these massive creatures could have physically maneuvered to mate. Giant Spiders and Carboniferous The freshwater Europterid Megarachne was initially misidentified as a giant spider during the late Carboniferous period. The confusion arose due to incomplete fossil evidence and a misinterpretation of its anatomy. Originally believed to be a colossal spider with an estimated lifespan of approximately 50 centimeters, Megarachne was thought to be the largest spider-like creature ever known. I couldn't imagine ever seeing one of those things in real life. However, further research and re-examination of the fossils later revealed that Megarachne was not a spider, but a type of Eurypteroid, an extinct group of aquatic arthropods 
commonly known as sea scorpions. The initial misidentification led to a misconception that giant spiders once roamed the Carboniferous landscapes, haunting the era with their exaggerated large size. Vintage paleo art from that period often depicted the Carboniferous as a time inhabited by enormous spiders, influenced by the initial misinterpretation of Megarachne as a spider-like creature. These illustrations portrayed these spiders as significantly larger than any known spiders, emphasizing the imagined frightful and monstrous aspect of these creatures. Fire-breathing Parasolorophus The claim regarding Parasolorophus possessing a fire-breathing capability proposed by creationist Duan T. Gish is not really supported by scientific evidence, even though it seems super cool and I wish it was true. Parasolorophus, a herbivorous dinosaur with a distinctive elaborate cranial crest, had a hollow tube-like structure extending from its skull. This crest is believed to have had various functions including vocalization, regulating body temperature, or display during mating or social interactions. However, the notion of this structure being a mixing chamber for flammable materials and enabling fire-breathing abilities in Parasolorophus is not substantiated by scientific research or paleontological evidence. Gish's hypothesis was that Parasolorophus would use his cranial crest to spew flammable materials like a dragon for defense against predators. This proposal is considered highly speculative and lacking imperial evidence, but it does make really cool art. Oort Cloud the Oort Cloud is a hypothetical region of space that is believed to exist in the outermost region of our solar system. It's thought to be a vast and diffuse shell or cloud composed of icy objects such as comets, remnants from the early formation of the solar system. The Oort Cloud, if it exists, is located much farther from the Sun than the distant Kuiper Belt, extending thousands of astronomical units away from the Sun. In the 1980s, scientists proposed the idea that mass extinctions on Earth occurred in regular intervals approximately every 26 million years. This theory prompted speculation about a hypothetical companion star to the Sun, known as Nemesis. It was suggested that Nemesis, in its orbit around the Sun, could pass through the Oort cloud at these intervals, disturbing the comets and causing them to rain down on Earth, potentially triggering mass extinctions like the one that happened to the dinosaurs. However, over time, further research and data analysis have led to doubts about the existence of Nemesis and the hypotheses of regular, periodic mass extinctions. Studies on the timing of extinctions have revealed inconsistencies in the supposed regularity of extinction events occurring every 26 million years. Haeckel Ernest Haeckel was a prominent and influential figure in the fields of embryology, zoology, and evolutionary biology during the 19th and early 20th centuries. He was a German naturalist and scientist known for his contributions to the understanding of evolution and embryonic development. Haeckel's ideas, while influential and groundbreaking in many aspects, were also associated with several controversial and disproven concepts. One of Haeckel's most famous Byronist theories was the concept of anatogeny recapitulates phylogeny, suggesting that an organism embryonic development retraces the evolutionary stages of its species. This idea proposed that the successive stages of an embryo represent ancestral forms from earlier evolutionary stages. However, this theory has been widely discredited in modern biology as an oversimplified and inaccurate as embryonic development does not precisely mirror an organism's evolutionary history. Haeckel's work encompassed not only scientific contributions, but also controversial ideas and theories that linked him to eugenics and scientific racism. His theories on polygenism, a discredited notion asserting different human races evolved from separate ancestral lines, and his views on racial hierarchies aligned with eugenist thought made his work appealing to groups like Nazi sympathizers. Moreover, Haeckel's support for a crystalline origin of life Proposing that life originated from a simple crystal-like forms was another concept that did not withstand scientific scrutiny as not accepted in the contemporary biology. Pseudofossils Pseudofossils are geological formations or structures that bear a resemblance to fossils but lack any organic origin or biological basis. These formations often resemble the shapes, patterns, or structures seen in genuine fossils, leading to confusion or misidentification by observers unfamiliar with geological processes. One example of a pseudofossil is Eozoan candesim, which initially interpreted as the remains of ancient marine organisms. It was thought to be fossilized remains of primitive single-celled organisms, resembling the cellular structures of Foraminifera, but further investigation revealed that Eozoan candesim was actually a mineral structure formed through geological processes rather than a biological fossil. Paleodictyon is another geological structure that has sometimes been mistaken for fossils. These hexagonal patterns found on certain seafloor settlements were initially thought to be the fossilized burrows of unknown ancient organisms.
However, studies later indicated that these patterns were likely created through non-biological processes, possibly related to sedimentary structures formed by natural forces such as currents or chemical precipitation. So that concludes the end of the video. Let me know if I should continue the series in the comments. And if you guys have any feedback for the video, I'd love to see in the comments. Anyways, thank you for watching. Bye.